Hey fellow golfers, this is Robbie from Best Ball. One of the most popular names in the golf accessory market today is Western Birch. Stop reaching in your pocket for boring plastic or plain white golf tees and elevate your game with premium wooden golf tees from Western Birch. You can customize both the hardwood and bamboo tees with one of their signature stripe patterns in a wide variety of colors. These tees are stylish enough to stand apart from the crowd, traditional enough to align with golf's heritage, and durable enough to make you forget about using anything else. Enter the code BESTBALL in the promo field in your shipping cart to add a free gift to your order. So visit westernbirch.com and get your own premium wood golf tees in the style that suits your game. Yeah, so we, we've always kind of dreamed of running a golf operation together. Um, kind of always assumed that it would be on the green grass side of things, uh, like at a country club. Um, but I was on maternity leave with our youngest son and found our original head cover supplier on Instagram and was like, wow, what the stuff that they were doing with kind of printed designs on leather and incorporating the printed designs with embroidery, just thought it was super cool. So Dan came home from work one day and I was like, hey, we could do this with the Wichita flag and the, the keeper of the planes and this, that and the other. And, um, and so that was, that was how it started. Hey guys, welcome to another edition of the Whole Story Podcast. Robbie here, missing Jonathan today. Sorry he couldn't be here. If you're if you're big Jonathan fans, uh, please stick around. We promise this will be entertaining. But uh, excited to be joined uh, by Katie and Dan Winters today of Thirty Five Seventy Golf Co. Um, and just excited to hear their story. A little background: They're in Wichita, Kansas, if I believe, if I've read correctly. Uh, and they th- started Thirty Five Seventy Golf Co. Uh, really to, to uh, well we'll hear about it right um it's awesome products i'm actually sporting they're chasing uh daylight uh, i believe it's that's what it's called uh, hat it's awesome i was just telling them i feel like i've had this thing forever um it's a great hat so highly encourage you guys and i'll tell you where to find it and we'll put notes in there but uh, uh katie dan welcome to the whole story podcast thank you thank you yeah, so I guess let's start out. How did you guys meet? I mean, obviously you're two folks that that love golf. Where did y'all meet in school? How did how did this happen? Yep. So we we met in Wichita. Uh, Dan was in college playing at Newman University, and he was the hot college guy on the driving range. Um, so we we met actually probably 2006 2007, mm-hmm. and then reconnected over social media after I graduated college um, in 2013 and. Dan was in Des Moines, I was in Wichita, and so we, um, there was an assistant pro uh, at a club in Des Moines, and I was working here, and so we did the long distance thing uh, between Wichita and Des Moines for a couple of years, and then he moved here, and here we are. Yeah, here we are. Very nice. Well, um, and so you both played college golf, is that correct? We did. How was, uh, how, how was that? Tell, tell us about that story. Yeah, so I played at Arkansas and KU, um, and it, it it was just, it was a blast. It's one of those things that when you're in the moment, it's it's hard. Um, it's harder than anyone can describe because you're, you know, you're working on your golf game, you're working on school, um, trying to have some fun and enjoy a little college life at the same time too. But uh, it's one of those things that's just an awesome life experience and uh, you can build on it forever. Yeah, I think we mentioned before. My my wife went to KU. I, I don't know; she, she might be a couple years older than you, but uh, but yeah, she did not play golf there. But she's a uh, she's a big Jayhawk fan, and which gives me a good uh, a good basketball team to cheer for most of the time. Um, I went to South Carolina, and actually, they're playing when we're recording this today. They are playing right now, Arkansas. So um, I, I will, we'll try to be friends throughout this call. So Dan, what Dan? When did you start playing golf, and how did uh, how was the college experience for you? Um, I started playing. Dad took me out for my first ever nine. I was, uh, I was seven, and just got the bug right off the shoot. Uh, there was this little par three. First time we're playing, over water, hit a three wood from like 
I don't know, 90 yards or something like that, barely got it over the water, ran all the way across the green and hit the stick and stopped like four feet from the hole and I was hooked ever since. Um, played in college, uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, we've had a, we had a good group of guys that when we were playing at Newman, we all got along and the, the travel was fun and, um, and that was really cool. And then been in the golf business after college ever since became an assistant golf professional and worked um in iowa illinois uh state of new york and then down here in kansas and then i've been at a teaching and fitting studio here in town now for almost eight years at this point okay so you're helping golfers you said i guess with lessons with getting fit for for clubs of all different varieties and and things like that Mm -hmm. yep Okay. And did I see somewhere in your bio you do online lessons as well? I do a little bit with uh, some of the kids, especially my kids that are farther away that have gone off to school. I'll do a lot of that online. Um, Yeah. Hey, golf friends. This is Robbie from Best Ball. Are you looking for the ultimate Myrtle Beach golf experience? Well, it's only a click away. Check out the two-play special at two of America's most awarded public golf courses and two of my personal favorites. Caledonia Golf and Fish Club and True Blue Golf Club are low country masterpieces featuring two iconic Mike Strance designs. Play these two incredible courses for one great price. Visit TrueBlueGolf.com to learn more about the two-play special and book your tee time today. That's TrueBlueGolf.com. Where I first came across you guys, uh, you started a golf company. Uh, in, in the Midwest, in Kansas, of all places, uh, my wife jokes that um, she would often go to Colorado from Lawrence, Kansas, uh, during the summers, and it was just the longest, flattest drive ever. Um, but you guys have started a golf company in Kansas. So mm-hmm. tell us the story. How did you all come up with this? You know, where did it begin? Yeah, so we, we've always kind of dreamed of running a golf operation together, um, kind of always assumed that it would be on the green grass side of things, uh, like at a country club. Um, but I was on maternity leave with our youngest son and found our original head cover supplier on Instagram and was like, wow, what the stuff that they were doing with kind of printed designs on leather and incorporating the printed designs with embroidery, just thought it was super cool. So Dan came home from work one day and I was like, Hey, we could do this with the Wichita flag and the, the keeper of the planes and this, that, and the other. And, um, and so that was that was how it started. Um, so our, our first products were our Wichita and Kansas head covers. And then we've been building kind of the blog and um, stories about golf courses and kind of the added products around it from there. Okay. Tell us about the name. Like, I, you know, I'm clued into it, but how did you come up with, with the name of the company? Yeah. So I-35 and I-70 run through the heart of the Midwest. So I-35 runs from... You know, honestly, like down in Texas, all the way up to Minnesota. Um, And then I-70 runs all the way across the middle of the U.S. And so um, we spent lots and lots of time on I-35 between Wichita and Des Moines for years. And um, so, you know, wherever wherever you're going in the Midwest, you're often taking a road trip. You know, we don't we we like our 12 and 14 hour road trips here as opposed to necessarily flying from like Wichita to Minnesota or something like that. And so. you know, just thinking about all the kind of road trip inspired golf trips and uh, things like that, just to kind of represent the whole Midwest That's where 35 and 70 came from. And then, of course, they're great golf scores, too. So <laughs> that is true. That is, I didn't even think about that, but I would uh, <laughs> most of the time I'm passing 70 at uh, at some point uh, middle of the back nine. So hopefully <laughs> hopefully I can get there a little a little later in the round. But so you started with head covers. Yes. So our very first products were two leather head covers Uh, one had the state of kansas outline on it and then another one had uh, what we call the wichita flag outline on it and then on the back of each one had leather with printed um just things that kind of look like kansas or look like wichita so for instance the wichita one has the skyline um which we don't have a huge skyline in wichita but um some some buildings that are definitely kind of iconic and then um like the keeper of the planes and the area code and some things like that so just things that kind of represent wichita represent kansas um 
on the back of those head covers. <laughs> That's great. And so where, you know, obviously hats, uh, but I've seen, you know, Dan, is that one of the, the hoodies that you guys have done? And yeah, this is one of the hoodies and um, super soft and comfy, but we've got some other stuff in the works too. That's getting ready to come down the pipeline. So it'll be kind yeah, of Yeah, I saw, uh, I think I saw a, a polo uh, and maybe, maybe I don't want to tease it out here uh, too much, but kind of yeah, what's, but where, where are y'all evolving? What's next in the uh, in the catalog? Yeah, so we we brought in the hoodies last winter. We're bringing in the, the polos. Uh, we're expecting to have them here by the end of the month. And so we're really just looking to anything kind of in the apparel or golf accessory space um, that, you know, we can put some fun Midwest inspired designs on. Um, that's where that's what we're looking for. What what's been some of the challenges y'all faced uh, as y'all tried to grow this thing? Gosh, <laughs> not enough time in the day. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's been a big one for sure. Um, boy, I, I think just making decisions on and and not making decisions to move forward and um, you know not waiting for something to be a hundred percent perfect because it's. It's it's never going to be a hundred percent perfect. So I think just getting getting comfortable with what we have, um, and then you know knowing that it it may not be exactly what everyone wants, but this is a good step forward. And then assuming this does well, we can kind of move on to the next product. Hey, do you find that kind of the Midwest golf community is 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 buying in and supporting what you guys are doing? I think so. Yeah. I think so for sure. On a local level, we've seen it. Um, we're working through kind of Twitter and Instagram hard to, to try to expand it outside of just Wichita. Um, cause ultimately we've got a lot of great stories, I think between courses in Kansas and Iowa and Illinois, um, Dan spent a lot of time growing up in the Iowa, Illinois area. And so, um, so yeah, we've got, got stories to tell kind of all over the place. Yeah. So speaking of courses, uh, kind of in that area, and we've talked, we've had a few different folks and I, I've gotten to go to Landman uh, there in Nebraska. Um, mm -hmm. But tell us about, tell us about golf in Kansas. Like why should somebody uh, jump on a plane or do that 12 hour car ride to come to Kansas to play golf? So in a lot of cases, it's pretty open and windy. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we've, we have everything here from your championship caliber courses like Prairie Dunes and Flint Hills National that have hosted USGA championships um, to, you know, very classic traditional courses like Kansas City Country Club, Mission Hills Country Club, very noteworthy architects, um, all, all the way to, you know, kind of your small town, nine hole um, rural golf course that, you know, may or may not be designed by someone noteworthy, uh, but is, is supporting the game in those places uh, where they might not otherwise have a chance to play or have to go quite a ways to have a chance to play and so um so number one it's windy um uh, often <laughs> we we always joke that if you wait for a calm day you'll never play golf in kansas uh, so that's the first thing i think the second thing that's awesome is just the variety so you know you've got western kansas that is flat as the day is long and um you know kind of pretty prairie type scenery to everything like around Lawrence, Kansas City area where the terrain really changes and it's very hilly, uh, a lot more tree lined. And so there's, it, it's an awesome variety between the, the different types of golf courses and kind of the different, um, different like levels of, of courses available as well. And then the last thing that makes Kansas golf really special is that it's one of the last places in the country that has sand green golf courses. Mm -hmm. So we have a little over a dozen uh, sand green golf courses kind of throughout the state typically in kind of some of the smaller towns um but you know you're you're raking the greens the putt and it, again it, it brings the game to these places that otherwise would have to go a long ways to find it so cool that is really cool i, I i've never thought of besides somewhere out in the middle east maybe in the desert or something that that you know, somewhere in the u.s would have sand greens so if you're yep. looking for an adventure, uh, head to Kansas and play on some sand greens. But mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you guys uh, heard the interview. We had Jared Dorfler on. Um, he talks golf business all the time, but he tells one story about he gets the shakes when he thinks of Hutchinson, Kansas and Prairie Dunes because <laughs> he said it was like 
35, 40 degrees, super windy, and they had their conference tournament. He played at Northern Iowa, and they had their conference tournament there, and there's I think he said he had the worst round ever, but um, yeah. So he he's he said he's not a fan. He gets scared every time he has to drive there. Yep. Yeah, that's a that's a not an easy golf course to play in forty mile an hour winds. That's for sure. It's it's not an easy golf course to play on a beautiful day, but uh-huh. it, it's a gem. We're we're lucky to have that close. So with uh, with training and club fitting and being a family uh, and running a small business, do you guys have time to get out and play? A little bit. We try to. I mean, it, as much as anybody can when, you know, family stuff, but we try to play a little bit. In fact, a little bit ago, I was out on the golf course with our four-year-old just kind of bopping around for a little bit, having fun and, you know, letting him watch a show. And if he wants to hit a golf ball, great. And if not, dad can maybe hit a couple golf balls. <laughs> yep. Yep. Ride around, ride around on a cart or, or whatever. Have fun. Yep. <laughs> yep. We play a lot of golf in like three to four hole stretches. <laughs> yep. So Got not, f- not a lot of official rounds these days, but still get to have fun with it. Yeah. Plus I saw you guys were able to, I guess you start taking some pictures and, and kind of documenting all that stuff as well. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So we got, um, we got a hand-me-down camera from my mom about this time last year. And it's one of the, one of the goals for the brand was to be able to do some blogging and I wanted to be able to take some good quality photos for the blog. And, um, so started using it and, you know, pictures were coming out either like completely white or completely black. And there was no in between and I had no idea why. <laughs> and so, uh, slowly but surely over the last year have learned how to use the camera and taken some really, got some really fun shots, um, gotten to do some fun, Kind of family things as well and so yeah it's been cool that is really cool well we talked about uh we talked about if you got a chance to play and both of you guys grew up playing and played college golf so the question we ask everybody and i'll ask each of you what's the story of your most memorable golf shot yeah so for me um it was in 2010 the kansas women's amateur championship uh, i was the defending champion and had just transferred from Arkansas to KU and was tied on 18 um, for the lead going into the last hole, last round, um, and ended up with about a 50-foot putt for birdie on number 18 at McDonald Park, which is a muni uh, here in Wichita. And this putt broke 10 feet each direction. So snaked up to the to the left and then kind of back down to the right and then back down to the hole um and i hit it and about halfway there i was like man this looks pretty good and drilled it to to win the state championship very nice dan how about you uh t shot on 18 at a club here in town um about 25 seconds before I proposed to Katie um, was shaken out of my boots and the fact that I even made contact with the golf ball was great and I actually just ripped one down the middle probably the longest I've hit on that hole ever and 20 seconds later I proposed to her right off the tee box (laughs) were you going to change your plan if it wasn't a good drive no, <laughs> it had been in my golf bag for about two weeks, so it it was time, and that was probably my most memorable. Can't cannot remember anything after that. After we finished the round, no clue what happened. <laughs> That's uh, that might be one of our all time best, uh, most memorable shot stories there. So well well done, congratulations. Uh, thank you. Today's yeah. podcast is sponsored by Atomic Golf. If you need custom ball markers, divot repair tools, and more that are made from high-quality materials like solid copper and brass and look really good, then you should check out our friends at Atomic Golf. If courses like Old Barnwell, Landman, Sweetens Cove, and more are already working with them, then you should too. Visit AtomicGolf.club and follow them on Instagram at Atomic Golf. Right, so we uh, we always do this thing uh, called the Quick Nine, um, where it's kind of a rapid fire, but you can you can uh, elaborate as much as you want on these answers and. Uh, y'all can uh, both answer because we want to hear your, your own opinions of it. But we'll start with this. What's the favorite course that you've played? 
Baltus Roll, for me, just an awesome golf course. Really cool. I think Victoria National, uh, right outside Evansville, is mine. Yeah, I, both are uh, both are in the ever-growing bucket list uh, that we have. Yes. So, yep. <laughs> well, speaking of bucket list, uh, what course is at the top of yours? I would probably say if we're gonna go especially midwest i'd love to get a chance to go up to sand hills i haven't done that yet um and i have some friends that have done it and i think that would be pretty cool i think i'd go pine valley big old northeast golf trip would uh yeah just be awesome yep both of those are uh, in the bucket for us as well so all right what pro golfer uh do you want to see wearing the 3570 logo first Ooh. Luke Gannon. Okay, who's that? Luke Gannon. So, so Luke's from Wichita. Um, I think he he calls Springfield, Illinois, home now. Um, but he's uh, been a good customer of Dan's in the past, and um, some mini super good kid on the mini tour. So we we would love to see him on the big tour for sure, and uh, we'd love to see him repping some thirty five seventy stuff. That's awesome. I could say Adam Hadwin. More just because he's also a local guy, which yep. would be kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, now, did you see him play in the players today? I haven't. I, no. I saw I saw on Twitter right before we jumped on that he's got a really, really good club throw that we need to go back and look at. <laughs> yes, we are. We are recording on Thursday of the Players' Championship. And, and yes, the 18th at... Uh, down there tpc sawgrass was not very kind to him he got away with his drive but then the second shot caused a epic club throw uh, who would be in your dream foursome i think i'd say it it would expand to a six some but i i think i would say our dads and our boys so we have two boys um dan's dad passed away a few years ago and the last round we played with him we played with my dad mm -hmm. but i think the um just a a good old family family trip with the family round with the two boys and both of our dads got us into the game. So that'd be pretty special. Yeah, that'd be pretty good. Yeah. No arguments there, right, Dan? No, no, <laughs> not at all. All right. Well, Jonathan's favorite question. And I'm sorry. He's not here to ask it. Favorite snack on the golf course. Peanut butter and banana sandwich. For both of you. You don't eat on the golf course. Mm -mm. No, no. <laughs> A hot dog if I if if we're at the turn absolutely. Okay, okay. Peanut butter banana is always a uh, a common answer. Yep. Yeah. All right. Favorite golf course logo. I like. I guess I could say the simple Wakanda Club logo with just the leaf is pretty cool. That's a good one. Gosh, there's so many good ones now, especially with some of the some of the designers that are doing like the hand drawn logos some of those are so cool for me i i love simple there's a there's a course in kansas city called hallbrook um hallbrook country club and they have a, a waving wheat that uh, honestly is real similar to our waving wheat in the 3570 logo so um i think i'd go with that yeah i do enjoy the waving of the wheat after a kansas victory it's uh Next. it's always fun and the chanting the uh the, the gregorian yes. chanting is it's very intimidating to the opponent so yep. all right Favorite golf movie? Caddyshack. Oh, yeah. Absolutely Caddyshack. 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 Okay. Very nice. All right. This one might definitely, be tough. Definitely second, second place to 10 cup, though, for sure. Okay. Next question might be a tough one. Who's the better golfer? It, it's a good match. <laughs> it's always a good match. It is. Yeah. Okay. All right. And final question. What's next for 3570? I think just continuing to grow and, and hopefully scale. Um, so we have six polo designs that, like I said, hopefully should be here uh, by the end of the month. And so by the end of March, so I think by the time this airs, uh, we'll have them active on the page. But, you know, the goal would be to get those sold out and um, people wearing them and, you know, ready to add a couple more designs and reload on the original designs and uh, go from there. That's awesome. And how did you come up with Ozzy? That, this is a bonus question. How did you get Ozzy there? Yeah, so uh, the Great American Buffalo is native to kind of the Midwest uh, prairie land area. And so um, the, the Buffalo is the 
state animal or state mammal of Kansas. So uh, we wanted to come up with an animal type mascot. And so the buffalo was an easy choice. And um, we named him Ozzy after Oz. So kind of a little ode to, to the Wizard of Oz. And um, Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Well, great. Well, it uh, it's fun watching what you guys are doing, uh, supporting the Midwest. I'm a I'm a South, uh, South Carolina guy, so um, but I appreciate what y'all are doing. It's fun to watch your brand grow. Uh, we'll be cheering you on, trying to help uh, tell others about it uh, all we can. So, um, Dan and Kay, I appreciate you guys joining us today. Yeah, thank, thank you so you. much, Robbie. Absolutely. We'll uh, we'll be sure to put uh, links to your webpage and your Instagram account in the show notes. Uh, but everybody needs to go check them out. Order some order some stuff from these guys they're uh they're doing it right and uh having some fun with it so go support this uh the family business <laughs> all right well jonathan again sorry you're not here but this is robbie joined by dan and katie uh, you've been listening to the whole story podcast